It is Show Us Your Tips. Melbourne Cup Day. Daggy, Beaver and Barney with you to look at all things from the Flemington card at Melbourne Cup as well as what's going on at Ramwick with the big dance and the little dance and the dance We're off. just doing a bit of a dance We're for that. We're just doing a dance for the intro. <laughs> that was the, so it's ready the to go. I don't know. <laughs> that sums up some of this card, I'll be honest. But, uh, That's what I was doing. <laughs> here we are. So who are we? We are um, Barney... Uh, is our co-host. I was going to introduce you first. Barney uh, is a footy and frothy co-host. I'm much more important, so mate. We'll save you. <laughs> uh, you can find this, the podcast on Spotify, iTunes, anyway. Good podcast. I found one of the best rugby league analysts in the business uh, and good confidant of the boys. So he's going to share his opinions on these races here. And we're going to talk. And Beaver and I do shows twice a week, every week. Yep. Wednesdays and... And tip winners. And tip lots of winners. Wednesdays and Saturdays. Um, so if it's your first time finding us, check us out. Subscribe to all our socials. We're across Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube through progroupracing.com.au and progroupracing.com.au itself where I'm assuming a lot of you have found this video. So, um, yeah, listen. Hopefully you find more winners and keep coming back and listening because they pay us lots of money and I like to keep doing it. So um, what's going on, boys? How are we looking forward to Melbourne Cup Week? Oh, I love the Melbourne Cup Week, mate. It's uh, nothing better than Cup Day and uh, sitting around having a bet and a beer and um, enjoying the day and hopefully backing a few winners. And you, Barn? Yeah, absolutely. I haven't been able to have a – I don't think I've had a Cup Day off in about 15 years, so I think I might have to go and put my annual leave in for, next, now year. for next year. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Absolutely. Be doing it, doing my utmost to make sure I'm home before 3 p.m. on Tuesday. <laughs> it's all right when you're in charge, just walk out. Anyway, we kick off. It's all at, right when you work from home. <laughs> that too as well. Yeah. Um, how's this card though? This is an impossible. Both these cards are very deep. Uh, lots going on. Good chance to play lots of runners in some of these, or yep. two and three runners, and hopefully turn a profit out of that. Yep. That will be the uh, that'll be the tactic here, mate, for most races. Yeah. We kick off with, well, it is wet. It's, it's going to be freezing apparently down there. It's wet. The rail moves to the two-metre mark. Uh, we're going to see, look, it played pretty well on the weekend. Yeah. You know, a six or a seven played all right. I think I think it'll be similar unless it rains during the day. Flemington's a pretty bloody good track. So I'm not fearing the worst just yet, but we, again, I've been wrong before. Speaking of which, we need <laughs> to give a shout-out to Elliot, who did stick solid and backed Ice Path in the group one. Well done, Elliot. Not well done, Elliot. No, no, Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> we just, you couldn't you couldn't imagine what hit my phone last night. No. The message from Elliot about ice bath. Like I, as I said, to you, mate, you back at long. You back at enough times, you'll eventually get a winner, and that's not very often. But it was often <laughs> it enough was a for big Elliot win because it's been a while. We're trying uh, to drink. Yeah, I'd be loaded it'd, right. Would have been a it. from the humble pie, but <laughs> yeah. we'll. Oh, mate, good luck to him. I'm I'm chuffed for him. It took my money, and I wasn't on. But uh, what under. The ice bath. It was a it was a good win. Yeah, good run. Yeah. The um, the well, the white stud, the Waikato stud boys had a good day. They bred. I wish I win in ice bath. So yeah. that's why we love they, Elliot. They can produce can produce a horse. There. He sticks solid. He's now he's he's now only uh, five hundred percent behind backing ice bath instead of a thousand percent. All righty, we kick off. We might talk about some winners here though. The Maribyrnong Plate kicks us off over the thousand meters. Group three for the two-year-olds up the straight. Beaver, lead us away. Yeah, tricky way to start the day. Um, not knowing a lot about these horses, mostly first starters. I've gone for the, the second favourite Cummings uh, horse here with Bow, Bowman aboard, uh, Diabelli. I liked the trial. Um, thought it was uh, not given, given too much of a hard time, but... Uh, was only less than a length off them, and I thought that was a really good trial for it to run well in this. Um, so I had it on top, but uh, don't know a lot about a lot of them, and so you're taking specking on 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 that. I was with um, I, I sort of agreed. I, it matched um, Zalfiqua in the last trial. Bowman goes on board it, uh, and with a little bit more upside, I think it can run well here. The market suggests that uh, obviously Zalfiqua one and debut had the rail in its favour. And is a complete professional, and maybe sometimes that's enough in these races. And I thought the only horse I mentioned here is Allstruck, who made twice made nice ground in two trials. Mark Zara drawn close enough to get that run just behind the pace and have a last snipe. Uh, but yeah, going three, one, and nine for me. Barney boy, how'd you go? Yeah, I only found the two, the two that you both mentioned, to be honest. Um, Zofiqua. 
queries on the soft ground coming out of a win on the, on a good. Um, but as you mentioned, William Buick could probably ride around on one of those wooden horses and <laughs> get and get a win. Uh, James Cummings stable. Uh, I'll be probably sticking with the favourite in this one. The Macca's Run is up next, 2,800 metre, benchmark 96, where I am going to stick with White Marlin. I've been with it both starts in Australia. It was a really nice win last start. I looked at, back at it um, before that. It was a nice debut in Australia, uh, beating some spruik horses along the way, including Manzois, who just won a derby. So there it is. Out to, I assume out to 2,800 should be fine. Um, bred that way, they wouldn't be taking it this way with any doubts. Do you want to take 210? Probably because this race you'll get a bit better. falls away. I think you'll get better on the day. Uh, but this race falls away a lot after it. Uh, I had the main danger is Verimli who will lead. Um, nice blowout to run a place uh, last start. And the 11 bucks might hold on and give you a side each way again. The rest of these are, are, are pretty average, to be honest. We, we talk a lot about them, you know, on Wednesday shows. So I think they're the two. Uh, Herman Hesse seems to go better up in Sydney, to be honest. But... Uh, yeah, favourite hard to beat, Barn. Yeah, absolutely. Favourite definitely hard to beat. The only one that I seemed, uh, that I went looking for was the Import Bell X1. Uh, good, soft and heavy record. Uh, one at the distance in the one attempt over the over the distance. So at 20 to 1s, I think I'll be having a spec there. Cool. Get Tolly. This should be $1.75. <laughs> uh, white Marlin? Yep. Mm-hmm. It is a, it's a special in this. Uh, it's, it's clearly the best bet on the day. It's won four from four. The rest of them are absolute garbage. Um, and this horse, last two starts, beat Keats, who come out and won today and won by five lengths today in the whatever cup it was. At Mornington? Yeah, Mornington, Mornington Cup today. Um, and won well and, and won easily today. And as you said, beat Manzois, who was outstanding um, yesterday. Uh, Something will have to go wrong for it to get beat. I think it's I think it's a good price if you get to, if you get five to four. Um, this is just back this and then all up it into the cup because this will be winning. This will be um, Gay's Cup horse next year. Yeah, this is uh, this is Fiorente. Yeah, right. Can bring it back this time next year and be hard to beat. I just made that up, but I assume so. <laughs> Four hundred meters sub zero. When, when does that start? I'll be definitely having a better look at it on the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> And I think you use it as just, your just double your money to put on something in the cup. Mate. And just yeah. through natural weight of money on cup day, I think you'll get better than evens, although it is early. The sub zero handicap, the Grays race, is up next. Four hundred meters benchmark ninety for said Grays. <laughs> what what have you done with this race? I couldn't quite get my head around Ascension. It was a big win, nice, but big SP. Form hold, looks to hold up all right, but was it an anomaly? Possibly. Um, I've gone for struck by uh, coming over from Adelaide. I thought it was first up win was really good. This is a, this is a fair horse, this. It's had some good um, form in the past. Um, goes goes to the front. Hopefully um, it can here. It ran in good races last preparation and it started well in the market um, in a few of them, but... Uh, Group three uh, led them up and only just nutted over 1,600 at Morfittville. Prior to that, similar was on the pace at, at a listed race and um, a little bit disappointing at, in an open race prior to that. But uh, I think it might have come back okay here and I'm willing to bet that that has happened and around the $5 mark struck by for me. Yeah, absolutely. That's the one that I found as well that I put on top struck by for all the reasons you said. Um, Criminal Code is probably another one that I'd be looking at. Um mm. It's has won before previously. First up, J Mac and Waller pretty much speak for themselves, don't they? And um, at six dollars fifty, I think it's a, that's another decent bet as well in this race. So. Last year's winner, Exelman's thirteen dollars, massive jump out win coming here. It's gonna, I think it's been primed for this, and I think it's got to run. We head up, end up heading up to Queensland. Didn't do a lot up there, but um, back to the, the Lambing Stable, I think can run well here. Gets through the ground okay. Uh, from Cooled, it was six weeks between runs, stuck back to the inside at Caulfield there and in the Ascension race. I think can improve here, drawn out a sweep down the outside at Flemington. Uh, criminal code you mentioned. And I thought Cunning Fox, well, you, you think this is one yep. of those horses you went looking for and you got seven bucks. Going on. But if it was 20s, you'd be like, oh, you've got to have a bet. It's one of those sneaky resuming stayers. Yes. That um, 
you've got to have something on, but I just it feels a bit short at seven dollars fifty. I was the same. I looked at it, and went, "Ooh, Cunning Fox, good run, well, oh, probably just wants the run." Seven fifty. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to set something for a grey yes. race on Cup Week, it's it, I think it can run well here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but at the price, Exelman from Cooled, and I. Let's see Ascension do it again. I guess we'll say. That said, it did beat home Pescara, who we have who we've had an opinion of, and we'll talk about later in the day. The fourth is the eighteen hundred meter Tab Trophy a listed race, uh, where for the three year olds, where my little girl Quang Tree. Uh, <laughs> Turns up again. I think she's going to run well again. Uh, I had the feeling she's too short, though. What price is she? 210. 210. Too short. Let me think about where it gets to because I think Zoe's Promise is a good horse. Uh, the form through both her last wins has held up and it will be a fighter up front there. That's the race. Do, um, well, that's the race for me. I've, <laughs> I've got nothing else mm, in my book apart from those two. I'm so. scared of the two Waller horses, but... Uh, I think I'd like to see them both on dry, which puts a pen through them. But you finish what you're saying. No, I was just saying, mate. That's it. I've got nothing else apart from what you just said there. I think Quang Tri probably wins and wins well. Um, but the only other real danger I can see is Zoe's promise. Yeah, I thought the same. I thought Quang Tri probably wins and probably wins well. I was a bit worried with what you said, Daggy. 210, I was thought may have been slightly skinny. But when I look at the field... I think it'll improve by that first up run, um, and it won pretty comfortably there. So, mm. why look, isn't it in the Oaks? I don't know. Probably just <laughs> maybe they don't think it runs twenty. Maybe yeah. they don't want to gut it. I mean, yeah, that's end of the right. days, you see those Oaks horses get gutted. And a lot. Paddy Payne just keeps improving these horses, and it was good last prep, and I think it placed it really well first up, and uh, won only by half a length there, but never looked like getting soft. beat. It yeah. was it was a soft win, so I think. Clearly on top for me. Um, I thought the only I thought if you're looking for a bit of value, number eight tokenist could run well around this fifteen to twenty dollar mark. Cool. The fifth is a. <laughs> the rest of this card is a bit mad. The, the <laughs> Shrimp of Essence plate is up next. A thousand meters up the straight for the three year olds, and, and this is this is a race. Like I, I spent a lot of time on this. Came with very little answers. We're looking for some, you know. Narratives to come up with, couldn't find a lot. Uh, so I'm going to throw it to you first, Barn, and I'll tell you what I end up with. Yeah, well, I was I was keen on the favourite, but the more I look at it, I think um, Baldino. Well, is it's eight dollars a field, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's $7.50, eight dollars yeah. a field. It's, oh, there is absolutely. no favourite. No, not really. Um, Baldino, brilliant win last start. Um, generally, doesn't run too many bad races, and I think it's in the form of its career at the moment. At eleven dollars, I'll be having an each way bet on Baldino, and um, Field of Flutes. I think is another one that um, how did been win a, last start? Yeah. <laughs> been a pretty consistent horse, and is seems to be hitting sort of towards its peak at the moment. So they're the two that I picked out. I'm sticking with Kin um, that I've have been on this preparation. Um, there's no reason for me at the moment to say that it can't run well again here. I think down the straight here might really suit it um, and with speed on. So it comes back from the 1,200 to the 1,000. Um, it, won the, it won a 900 at, at Newcastle and then was probably the run of the race in the 1,000 metre where it just never got a show. Um, got well out of its ground last start and just they couldn't make that much ground at uh, from that far back at Caulfield. I think down the straight really suits them. $9, I'm... I'm pretty keen to play on Kin. I think it can uh, run really well. I think Baldino um, has been good and is a is an outside chance. And I think uh, Fusion uh, number four can run well Fission? again. Yeah, Fusion or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I said it. I found three chances and they're all good orphan horses. I don't know how I, I didn't set out to do it. It <laughs> happened and here I am. Renoso, it's fifty to one. Uh, big win at Hawkesbury. Came down and had EIPH last start. We've seen so many horses. Uh, win coming off that for some reason. It just keeps happening. Uh, and it's 50. is going to have something on it from Seleuce, who probably doesn't want it wet, but it was an incredible win at Goldberg. Uh, couldn't go at all in the wet at uh, Randwick, but I think those tracks at Sydney are much worse than these. If it turns up and runs well, this might be the best horse. And Lazcar's uh, last time was up the straight, missed uh, Giga Kick by about a length. Uh, looks all right now. And has been running well. Gets William Buick, and again was what what price was it? There it is, ten bucks. Yes. So, but you can make you 
tell me which horse can't win. Charlemagne can run well. You can go right down it. But somehow I found a Godolphin. Even the Hawks horse, number 14, oh, Kiros. Well, I was keen on it. It, it went to Newcastle one at a price, and I was keen on it the week before in town, yeah, midweek, and I didn't realise it was running. I think it won about six or seven bucks at uh, Five dollars. Close enough. Um, That's the know, 20s, yeah. Yeah. It, it could be the best horse. Like, it could be the best yeah. horse. We don't know. So, great race. Looking forward to learning more. Uh, don't know if we really helped anyone, but <laughs> there it is. Uh, the 800 metre listed at Furphy Plate comes up next. This is... Well, it's certainly a race. It's not as exciting. Uh, is there anything you like here, Beaver? It doesn't get any easier. This is a really tough race. I just went for a little bit. I mean, that's all fairly much value here. Again, $5 the field. I just went for a little bit more value. I, I narrowed it down to two horses, but I've settled on number nine, Sir Davey. Uh, gets third up here. I thought the first two runs have been okay. Um, and I think now this is uh, out to the 1800 really suits. Hopefully it can get into a nice spot and run a really bold race and no name lane. I think it can bounce back. Um, I know it had three wins in the trot. Seventh, its seventh last start wasn't the worst run in the world. Uh, freshened up in a trial at Strathalban for this and can run well again. I've got White Noise on top. It was a nice Australian debut. Hit the line pretty well, beating home uh, Bermudez. Key rival here. Uh, and just missing behind Uncle Bryn. Uh, now second up, has had the run, gets through the ground okay and is... 18, 19, 20 to 1. From No Name Lame, you, you meant it was flying, went to the Group 1, ran well there, actually. It was quite a good run in that race behind Tuvalu. Uh, again, it's nearly 10 bucks there. Inside gate, Linda Meach on a leader in, a, in some of these races. Well, it's where you want to be. And Bermudez gets back to Flemington, back on the wet. I think are all ticks. It will run well. Barn. I've got the I've got the exact same two, but I've got them the other way around. I, I just hope they... Um, hold Bermudez up a little bit just for the, the finish at the end. And uh, if he's sitting on, on the leader's back with 200 to go, I think it'd be a pretty, pretty good thing. Um, yeah, I'm going Bermudez uh, as my top pick and then White Noise as my second. Lovely. The Lexus Melbourne Cup is a feature, 3,200 metres, Group 1. Uh, we've already spoken about it. Go and find the show there. But just recap, I guess, your top four, boys, quickly. Yeah, my top four was number eight, Yuval Legend, uh, number four, Montefilia, number 19, Smokin' Romans, and number 12, Who You Mal. Yeah, I went with without a fight. I was my on top with Deauville Legend in second. I had, um, sorry, uh, Vow and Declare as my third pick and Realm of Flowers as my fourth pick. I went uh, six without a fight from eight, Deauville Legend, Four Montefilia and one gold trip for me. We get to the uh, – in memory of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the benchmark 90, 1,400 metres. Uh, over the years I've had uh, taken quite pr great pride in tipping the winner after the cup. Uh, but they've moved – they used to be the MSS Sprint used to be after this race, but they've swapped them around, I think. Uh, but we've got a benchmark 90, so I may as well tip a winner anyway. Uh <laughs> I'm going to stick with Jay Mack and Waller. Minx moment was a lovely win last time. Uh, did get the absolute perfect run, but chimed in, ran away. Uh, drawn out, but will be camping in the running line, ready to strike here. And at around the $5.50, will run well. Do I want it to get real heavy? Probably not. Uh, from Nugget, who's trolled up really well. Uh, last time bolted in, jump out. It's going to run well here. And... Flemington's perfect for Munamek. It's time for Munamek to put something up and um, do something here, isn't it? Put up or shut up. No, I've gone for Minx moment as well. I, I really liked the last win. I thought it was outstanding. Um, it hit the line beautifully. Um, I think it'll be further improved by that. And I think it's uh, a really nice bet on the card here. As long as it gets a little bit of luck in running from the 14, um, it's going to be chiming in and super hard to beat down the middle of the track. And I think you're right, Nuggets, the main danger. Um, I'd be saving on it, but mixed moment for me. I've gone with the garden. Um, cool. Yeah. You know, good good record. Ten, uh, 10 top three finishes out of 12 starts. Uh, decent in the soft range. Decent at the distance. So I, I think it'll run a pretty good race and give you a good sight at $11. So. The, um, the Visionary form looks pretty good here. And Field of Roses has been good. So, yeah, definitely. I've just noticed a breeding on that. You'd know all about that. It's out of Nicky Nocky. It's called The Garden. 
with a couple of girls, <laughs> little girls you'd know about when you're born. <laughs> What's it called? The, um, in Night Garden. In the it? Night Garden. Yeah, yeah, I only just noticed one. that. <laughs> wow. One for all the parents out there. The uh, 1400 Some of your best work there, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> right around <laughs> gear, don't I? Just, oh, sorry. I'm going back to the bar. 400 metres. Jong Hong Kong Jockey Club Stakes is up next, Group 3. Barn, what are you doing here? <laughs> let me let There's me a thousand convert chances to my in notes. <laughs> okay. I've actually, put, yeah. I've actually put roots on top. Um, yep. Nine dollars. Very good this prep with two wins in a second. Um I can't I think she's gonna be very, very hard to beat. She's uh, probably career best form and uh, Damien Oliver on board. Yeah, yeah. I noticed Craig Williams is not on board, which is interesting. <laughs> yeah. Beaver? Oh, I thought Roots was a massive chance, but I was pissed off because I backed it last start. <laughs> fucking lost, so I'm not tipping it. Um, I don't know. Just maybe it's not up to this quality. Uh, it's its first two wins were at midweek, and then my whisper beat it. It was, you know, it was held up last start, but I don't know. I just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let it slide for, for, for now. Um, I come up with two. Uh, fine point. I'm going to stick with fine point. I thought it was a good run last start. It got onto the wrong part of the track at uh, Randwick and was stuck on the inside and didn't really get a clear run. And then uh, they've brought it down here f- for for this. Uh, I think that's a really good point. A third up, I think it'll be improved. So I, I do like fine point and I think Heresy can run well as well, third up as well. Um, it was a really good run last start again. Uh, two runs in Sydney, coming down here, flew home, uh, has a good finish and Flemington will suit, so uh, they're the two for me. We'll get to see that form in Sydney. We'll get to that later, but the heresy form yep. with Sky Command. Uh, I've I've got promise success on top. Isn't this obvious? It's uh, It just won the invitation, which Icebath came out and won from. The Sydney form's been going all right down there. It's inside gates are concerned, but I think by this stage uh, they'll be spreading across the track. So uh, Karen may have just won a Melbourne Cup. Hopefully he's recovered and can ride this all right and uh, add another... Yeah, what twenty grand to his kick? Well, bugger. Uh, from yes, I agree. What's fine point done wrong? Keeps winning. Um, comes through some nice form stuff there and fits really well here. Does it run in the wet? Maybe not. You've mentioned roots and Sir Lemurs thirties, and has had no luck last two starts. Before that, bolted in in Sydney and then just missed behind um, Frumos, where it didn't have a lot of luck either. Uh, and loses Willie Pike and gets Brett Prebber, which many would argue is an upgrade. So uh, at the 30s, happy to have that as well. So a bit walled up uh, after the favourite, well, after promise to success there. And the last on the card is the listed MMS Sprint. Series suspects already come out. I assume uh, Gentia and some others are coming the out. Gentia is, sa- is out. Is yep. out, yep. So, oh, just just yeah. Gentia is out. Okay, so the ones that did run on Saturday are all out. All that being said, who do you like, Barn? Oh, well, it was going to be Argentia <laughs> yeah. if it was going to be backed up, but it was probably never going to happen. Um, I've gone with Zuthus, to be honest. Uh, Jamie Carr, Cummings. It's been um, it's generally pretty solid. Or well, this last two races, I thought it's it's run quite well, um, fresh. And then, yeah, it, it was gapped a little bit in its last race. But uh, I think it, there's a chance of it winning at $6.50, so... I'm, that's where I'll be going. No, it'll win. It's uh, It was stuck three wide outside lead mm. all the way around there behind Gravina. Had no luck at all. Um, now gets up the straight. It's going to be able to cruise up. It gets through the soft okay. And I think this is a great chance here at the price. From uh, Well, if the astrologer who's still in, I assume will come out if it backs up. I'm, I'll have something on it. Mm-hmm. And... Najmadi is next best, but doesn't like the wet and has been scratched the last few weeks. I assume probably doesn't line up here either. But if it's he, will be the other chance. Really keen on Zuthus, actually, should the other two come out. Yeah, I like Zuthus as well. I thought so on the straight track will really suit it. Loved the first up win and didn't have a lot of luck last start, as you said. So I think at 6.50, it can explode down the middle of the track in this and be super hard to beat and hopefully... If we're in front, load us right up. And if we're <laughs> chasing, then load us right up. Chasing, <laughs> <laughs> um, at 6.50. So you you got, a, you got an opportunity there either way. So Zethos on top for me there. Beautiful. All right. The Melbourne Cup Quaddy Beaver. You've been building this all year. Melbourne Cup Quaddy. Race seven. First leg. 
Number eight, do you have a legend? I'm going to go wide in this. Uh, number six, without a fight. Number four, Montefilia. Number 12, who you mal. Number 19, smoking Romans. And number nine, Stockman. Just because yep. I can. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's your show. In the second leg, race eight, I'm going number six, Minx Moments. Number five, Nuggets. Number 19, Field of Roses. And number 13, Detonator Jack. Race nine, going number one, Promise of Success. Number three, Literary Magnet. Number 18, Fine Point. Number five, Heresy. Number 19, Roots. And in the last leg, I'm going... Number 10, Nicolini Vito. Number 11, Zethos. And number 16, Vespertine. Lovely. For progetracing.com.au, check them out for their free tips, extensive guides, and plenty more. Your best and value. My best bet is race two, number seven, White Marlin. Thanks for coming. I'll be cleaning up. And then my, bet, my value bet is race five, number 17, Kin. You got a best and value, man? No, I don't, mate. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make my best white marlin as well. Race to number seven. And my value, let's make it, yeah, let's make it race five, number seven at Reynoso. So I can cut a cool promo if I tip one at 50s. Yeah, good on you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> now we head up to Randwick where the rail goes to the two metre mark. And you wouldn't believe it, apparently it's going to rain in Sydney again. But, uh, <laughs> Bit of drizzle around. I don't think it's going to be too bad. I think it's still uh, going to be, at worst, a soft track. So we'll see how we go. If it was dry, I'd be a wary, bit wary about up the inside. But we will see how this plays out throughout the day. We kick off with the midway. Benchmark 72 as usual. Over the 1,800 metres, Beaver. Anything here? Oh, tough race. I thought Karma Zone's probably the best horse in the race. It's won its last two. And yeah, like it's finished off quite nicely in both of them. So... I thought it is probably the hardest to beat if you're looking for a main danger. Uh, I'd probably look at the 13 nautical miss. Not much more to add. Uh, Zone's fl- come back flying. Two nice wins. The form's been okay out of those races. Uh, a nice little claim for Zach Lloyd, who is flying. Even Barney sent me a message the other day about Zach Lloyd, so yeah. he's on board. One on Zone last start as well. Exactly. Uh, and I had the danger. Any cut of the ground does suit nautical miss. Uh, and... Nice enough run last time. Inside gate here, big field, Alicia Colleton, but um, I think he's next best. Um, yeah, I'm with Carmazone as well. The the only other one I was really looking at was maybe one more Sapphire. There's one with big weight before over a similar distance, so um, the one for a specking at $9.50. Mm-hmm. The 1,000 metre highway is up next. Jeez, we get some bush horses today. <laughs> God. Uh, anything here? I, I didn't even do the race. Didn't do the race. You got it. I, I was looking and looking. I hadn't, didn't have a great idea of what was going on, but I landed on Miss Kirribilli. I have a bet there at seven dollars. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's just got a pretty good, decent record mm-hmm. out in the bush where it's been running around, running, running first and second its last four starts. So, no, cool. We'll take it. We'll take it on board. Actually, I do want to mention Limited Reality um, might be overs. Did come here from open big price too. Um, was saved from Saturday and who else did I have a look at here in my minimal form? Oh, Soleri has um, shell star form. So that means something, I suppose. Shut up. Thousand <laughs> 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 metre benchmark 84. He's talking for the sake of talking. It's my job. Yeah, okay. Thousand metre benchmark 84. Hey, I didn't even get a tip. That's you just said you just did the cross. And to no, one. I did Hal Mary. <laughs> oh, what do you like? <laughs> Number 11. Maybe. Maybe. Oki's choice. Oki's choice. <laughs> yeah, Why? If you're going to have a bet. Uh, Why? <laughs> Why not? All right. It's got okay form. Goes, uh, goes good. Might jump out, lead, and not be caught. If anyone else wants a. <laughs> Punting podcast, <laughs> just email Froger Racing because why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're talking for the sake of like the sound of your own voice. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> 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 All right, thousand meter benchmark eighty falls up next. What do you got here? Don't know. 
No, no, I do. I do. I do. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't sworn this show in three years. I'm testing your patience. That was, the, me. that was the plan. <laughs> um, see what you're made of. Uh, actually, I'm not too sure, actually. Um, <laughs> number four, Queen Bellissimo. I think it, resuming, can run well. Goes really good first up. Uh, four starts, two wins, two placings. Uh, Twelve starts in its career have all been pretty good. Trialed well at Hawkesbury. Um, behind Black on Beauty, which has won um, at Hawkesbury. And uh, this started favourite in races, won by way of Hera Falls and some of the likes. So I think he can run well and probably too good for these. I've gone with the Bopper, the top weight. Um, he's won here twice out of five starts. One and one from the dis- uh, one and one track and distance and two out of two at the distance. So. I like Suami here. Uh, I'm going to spec it here. It uh, has changed to the Pfeiffer Yard, who's going quite well. Trolls are fantastic coming here. It uh, did some good stuff early on, and it lost its way the last few runs last prep. But I think at the 26 bucks, I'm happy to have a spec. A bit of a claim for uh, Reese Jones. And uh, in a previous life, did some really good stuff. Uh, previous life, even. Did some really good stuff uh, from the Bopper, who trialed really well and unbeaten track and distance, as Barnes said. Loves a thousand. Dylan Gibbons... Might be the go-to jockey on the whole card, to be honest. Uh, so th- between the two, I think they can both run well. Race four is the bench is a benchmark 64, 1,300 metres. This is well and truly midweek stuff, but it also brings up my best of the day. Satin Star was a great debut. Um, rode the pace, uh, won pretty well. The format that has stacked up nicely. It's going to lead up these dorks here. And um, then went had a tick over trial, only beat home, lost and running, and uh, another good horse whose notes haven't reflected. Oh yeah, Bonus Not Chase ran just placed in a Group One, so you know the form's all right. Um, they won't run this down. Uh, if we have a spec operative out wide, if you want for your exotics, maybe you're not going to spec. So let's it'll be yeah, right, go on. <laughs> Set and start Sorry, for Pop. me too. Yeah. That's it. Same as you. Let's Swims. see if we can carry the weight of three of us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, race four is the big dance. Two million dollars over the mile. Beaver. Hosier is one of my horses, and uh, so I'm very keen that it can run really well here. It's sort of been um, had its run spaced uh, since its last one on the 1st of October, where it won uh, very nicely. Uh, gets a bit of weight relief there. Frankie de Tori's a bit of a worry. Um, and gate 20. Uh, I was what about bit... Frankie though? Did he get to sp- – what about the other day, Frankie though? <laughs> he just wiped out half the field in that first ride in Australia. How yeah. Was anyway. Um, unbelievable. He does have form. So <laughs> I thought it I thought it could run well and I've got it on top just because it is a horse I like and it is going really well, this preparation. There's two other horses here that could run well. Um, Bandersnatch. Quality time, will it run? I think so. Why wouldn't it? It's a two million dollar race. Why wouldn't it, was, it run? Oh, I thought it was in a, another race. <laughs> it just, ran on Saturday. Oh, Saturday it did. It'll yeah. back up. It'll probably back up. Yeah, but Panda Snatch is the main danger here. Um, been going well this preparation, and last run was a very nice run in the last at uh, Caulfield. So it comes back to Sydney here, gate twenty two. Bit of a problem. Get drawn wide, but there might be. There's. Four emergencies here, so there'll be a few scratchings. Um, yeah, probably so the four emergencies. <laughs> as a minimum. <laughs> um, maybe not. We'll see. Quality time might come out, actually. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how we go. But uh, Hosier on top with Bandersnatch, main danger. Barn? Yeah, I'm with Hosier as well. Um, Frankie's a bit of a worry, as, as you mentioned. You might, might think, but this, is, this is what he's come out to ride, yeah. this race, I reckon. Cause Quite possibly. What was he going to do for well? It, it's all been for Waller. This would be his setup to run well here. You are so. telling me he came to Australia to, uh, to ride a two million dollar. They ride, oh, you know, they ride for yeah. ribbons and yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, okay. in Sydney free yeah. shampoos in the UK. So well, that's yeah. a, basically all he spoke about in any of his interviews mm. was the prize money in Sydney. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's probably not far wrong there. Um, the only other one I I really had an interest in was probably Wicklow. I think its form recently has been uh, quite good. Not a bad um, distance uh, form as well going into it. And, yeah, I, I expect it to run well. So well, wide try. barrier is a, an issue, but. Yeah. Um, three from three again. Hosey, yeah, this is, it would be would have been the goal from day one. They sent it up to Chris Lees, did uh, Team Lloyd. They sent it up to Coffs Harbour, killed him there. 
um, killed them again. We've seen form come out of that race. Frankie's flown over to ride it. He's going to have one job, and it's not bulldoze off the field crossing this field, uh, but he will take it to the front. I think it's going to be very hard to beat. From Bandersnatch, she's absolutely flying. Mm. I wish our win looks pretty good here. Um, just missed behind him, and then just missed behind Aegon at Caulfield, who's a Group 1 winner as well. So I think I think this is a simple race, and I think the price on both is great. The only other two, even in, I wanted to go fancy back, but I do not like the inside gate, and I do not like Chad Schofield from said inside gate. Uh, and Surf Dance is the only other hope. Uh, we'll roll forward and um, did start four bucks against Cascadian and had issues after the race. So, yeah, simple race. I like it. Race five, six is the uh, little dance for half a mil. Barn, what have you got in this less enthusiastic race? I've gone with too big Fari. Um, you know, it, it can, can, uh, it, sorry. <laughs> It can, I agree. What can I do? <laughs> <laughs> it can perform on a big day. I think this is probably the, the, a race that it's been set for. Um, nicely weighted and it, at its best, in its best form, it can win this race. So. Yeah, fair call. Uh, I've gone for Solar Apex. Uh, gets third up here from the Wallace Stable, Pikey aboard. Um, finished behind Cisco Bay last start, but got well out of its ground and finished off nicely. Uh, 15th on the turn to finish 8th. And then prior to that uh, was behind Fine Point, which is in Melbourne and can run well. So I think Solar Apex is a nice bet. Well, I'll, I'll guess go a point of difference in Ida. Uh, this is a this is a bush race, more or less. And Ida has done some good, decent stuff behind Metro Horses. Comes here, gets Dylan, loses Rachel King, gets Dylan Gibbons. Gets a blending barrier for Bjorn and is going to run well here. At the what's the price? I haven't ticked over. Six fifty. Six fifty looks good to me. Uh, look, I went looking for too big Ferrari because that was an enormous run last the last two starts actually. But Kathy from an inside gate, well, it's certainly there. Uh, and point counterpoints and honest little bush try and in a bush race he's going to run well at a big price as well. Um, that's it for me. I'm, you've been with Steel last couple. You done? Done. Cool. Can it can run well, but um, yeah, I just prefer to see something. Race seven is in the eleven hundred meter uh, benchmark hundred over eleven hundred meters. There's lots of ones there. Confuse me for a second. Uh, here they all are. I have got Dragonstone on top though. This it, last time it came back to Sydney, it absolutely bolted in. Um, that was a decent run back to the inside on a track that was all swoopers at Caulfield. I think it sets up perfectly here. Best horse in race, and um, if all things go to plan, it's going to run very well here from. Sky Command, we mentioned earlier that form line we're going to feel on down south, but it's going to be up up on pace and it's going to be very hard to get past and I have to pay respect to Clemenceau, but I don't know. Just got an icky feeling about it because I can. But Yeah, Sky Command is the one that I found. Um, I think lead would be hard to overhaul and um, it'll be in it definitely in the finish. So. Cool. Beaver. Yeah, I'll be keen as long as the track's playing evenly and they can come down the middle of the track, Dragonstone for me. I think it'll get the right sit here. Um, it's got the best finish in the race and um, as long as they can just come from off the pace a bit here, I think Dragonstone can win. Uh, if if it's more leader-dominated, Clemenceau's going to be hard to beat, but mm. Dragonstone for me, you can get the sit and last crack. Race 8 is a 1,300-metre handicap for the Bush and ACT horses. Uh yeah, anything here, Beaver? Oh, look, I think the favourite will win this. Uh, I like far too easy. I think it's it was a great run uh, last start behind. I was at the track and I backed the winner front page, uh, who led all mm. the way and far too easy. I chased really hard. It was a nice run. 59 and a half, it's weighted up to its best. Um, and gate 17, which is against it. So um, that's probably the only downside, um, I would say, but it's probably going to come in a couple of barriers and there's a few emergency. There's already two scratched and come in, so it's probably going to start around gate 13. If it gets half a decent run, it'll be winning. My first thought was, why, and there's still no jockey booked it, why is Julian Rock 40 to 1? Uh, just missed behind Odette last time, who's won again since. Uh, before that... Wasn't far away from – was unlucky behind Fox Fighter. And so that's proper Metro form. At the 40s, I think runs well here. Has there been one of my horses? No. Which um, when I find one that I don't like, that's 
Are you kidding? Why is it 40? Because that's what it should be. No, it's, that's fine. It's eight years old and it's we're in his 20s behind all dead. What's what's yeah. an all dead? Like, seriously. What's a Dalavan as a Galo and a Banju? Better than that. Okay. Um, that's fine because um, Far Too Easy is a very good horse and it will run well here. Uh, Jimmy Allman has to come to Sydney and do it again. And Fender gets Nash off a wide run. Will run well. Anything else? <laughs> yeah, I'm with the favourite as well. Down in class, I think. <laughs> Fantastic record. Um, I'm, I'm probably having each way bet on Dalavan. Uh, just Glad you didn't say Julian Roll. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have it. You know, I can't wait for it. It's got the picket again. fence up. It, it may just add another one to it at $14 and $3 $3 odd a place. So. Julian Rockwell up Reynoso is going to pay for my first house. Can't wait. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. You can get on with me. <laughs> All right, Dan, I'll take yours. <laughs> what, tell me what, when you're going to have the bet, tell me what price <laughs> you're getting. I'll double it. Right. <laughs> We've got race nine, the uh, 1500 meter benchmark 88. What is this show anymore? Uh, who's going to win this, someone? Barney? I'm going with the favourite again. I think Zushak is, um, is barely runs a bad race generally. Um, it's, Seems to be suited in this uh, in this benchmark eighty eight race, and I think it'll be winning. So, yeah, it's got it's got the right form and the right lead up for this type of race. Um, certainly, certainly the hardest to beat. If I was looking for a horse to uh, save on, I'd turn I'd back turn on the charm. It's it's going well at the moment and being pretty consistent. But Zushak just looks um, weighted right for this race and and will run well. Yeah, so we'll turn on the charm, as you've said. Zach Lloyd flying back from a, a beautiful win up in Queensland, which you spruced up, and I like the $9. Zusak, you've covered off, and I really wanted to – I thought From the Bush was a horse to follow from last Warwick Farm, but I cannot possibly back G Buckley in town. Um, we'll get to the quarty later. The clean away handicap is 1,200 metres, benchmark 84 to finish the day. A shorty here in uh, Norwegian Bliss. Is that how you're going? Yep. Right. I think uh, a shorty but a goody. Um, again, I think it's a nice way to finish the day and uh, whatever you're up, you'll be able to sort of extend that a little bit more by backing Norwegian Bliss. I've gone with Grand Remore. I know it doesn't win out of turn, but um, I, as you mentioned, I really like the look of young Zach Lloyd. I think he's going to be a very promising jockey in the future and... He may be able to just kick this one home fresh. Um, so I'm going with Grand Remore at $7. And good luck to our man, Steve Chester, who's in it. So I am going with, well, I actually ended up, well, look, I've got Norwegian Blues on top, but Max Chanel is going to run well here. Trials are fantastic and uh, we'll give you a sight. And I thought that, uh, well, no, Bullet Riders in this race, I mentioned him earlier. And um, Clary's got Maren Parr going well, who mm. wasn't doing a lot for... While the last prep, uh, two trials have been fantastic. It's Nash and is going to roll forward here uh, in the same interests. So they'll go in the quaddy, which I will talk about now. Uh, race one will be... Uh, race seven, leg one. <laughs> <laughs> Early quaddy? No. Number six, <laughs> Dragonstone. Number seven, uh, Sky Command. And number 10, Clemenceau. You Thank okay you. with that? Make your, your bears. <laughs> I'm, just, oh. I'm just helping the bunnies get the right <laughs> races. <laughs> Tick the right boxes. <laughs> race eight. <laughs> Is number one, a far too easy. Number two, Fender. Number six, another one. Number seven, Julian Rock. And number 15, uh, which is Don't Forget Monica. Race nine is one, Turn on the Charm. Three, Zushak. Eight, From the Bush. And 12, Tamerlane, the Godolphin horse we didn't mention. And we'll come home with... Two Norwegian Bliss, if you want to have that one out, as Beaver will do, that's fine to your best. I have six Mar and Par, seven Max Schnell, and 11 Bullet Rider in. Your best in value, Beaver, at Roundwick. My best bet comes up in race eight, number one, far too easy. And my value bet comes up in race six, number four, Solar Apex. Lovely. My best is going to be race four, number eight, Satin Rock. And my value, race five, number one, Bandersnatch. In the dance. Any of you? No, man. <laughs> I'm giving you my tips. That's all I'm doing. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Back some of his. All right. Who are you, uh, Barn? Give us a bit of a plug for Footy and Frothies and that nice hat you're wearing. 
Yeah, absolutely. During the, the NRL season, myself and the Dags to here, we sit down and go through every game um, that's been played and what the uh, – sorry, go through and pull apart every game that's been played and uh, ha- how it was won and how it was lost and who you should be um, putting your money on the next week. And then we go and have a look at the, the preview for the for the following week. I uh, really enjoy doing our, our footy analysis. We sit down here and um, we, we go in depth. So if, you, <laughs> if we really actually pull apart every game and – have a look at it from every angle that we can find and the way that um, the, the best players have been playing. So if you enjoy your, your NRL, get aboard and uh, Spotify, Facebook, all the rest of them and yep. have a listen. You find us there, Facebook, Spotify, YouTube. And you're going to plug, Beaver? ProGoodRacing.com.au. I'm the greatest ever. That's about oh, there it. There he is. ProGoodRacing.com.au. You can find uh, everything going on there. Stuff for mailing lists. And you already know how good I am. So check out KickUp.com.au as well for uh, all your associates. It may be a bit negative in horse racing. There's plenty of rebuked myths up there. Uh, good show, boys. I'm glad we got through that. It took yes. a bit, but here we are. Good punting, everyone, this week. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday night, Beaver. To do the Oaks Day. Oaks Day. Oaks Day. It'll be a Zoom show. Okay. Cool. I've, I can't put up with you five nights this week. All right. Oaks Day oh, you think I'm, preview. I'm Oaks happy about Day. It? And, then, uh, and then we've got Champions Day Saturday. Take care. Good punning. And we'll talk soon. Catch ya.